5 p.m. in uh, Brisbane, Australia. Um, hope this finds you well and moving forward with your OET preparation. So everyone, just um, type in where you are and um, I'll just adjust a few things on my screen just to make sure that's all working. So just bear with me while I do that so that I can see all your comments coming through. So we got Marita in Sri Lanka, Anila in India. Good morning to Asiam from Dubai. Hello, Alex. Hello, Jamal and Kusam from the Punjab. Jamal also in India. Hello to Gina, Malika. We should be streaming on YouTube as well. We're streaming on several channels, Facebook and YouTube. Um, so um, hopefully you can see me and get my messages loud and clear. Hello to Priya, Mohammed, Elena, Sarita, Aya in Iron Sudan. Excellent. All right, I'm just looking for my YouTube video, everyone. Don't seem to be able to see that. Hello to Safi in UAE, Liti in India. Hello to Gerald. All right, we might, yes, we're, we should be, we're, we're short one channel, uh, everyone. There should be one more channel running. Um, if you are on YouTube, hope you can see me, but I can't see your messages. Um, we're actually on two YouTube channels. We're on OET Online YouTube. We are on the OET Center YouTube. We're on OET Online Facebook, and we are on the OET Center Facebook. So multiple channels here, just trying to juggle that. All right, now I'll be back in one second. I'm just gonna send a quick text. All right. So we're going to do listening part B, everyone. So let's just do a bit of a warm up. Lots of people are here, which is wonderful to see. How do you feel about listening part B? Challenging, difficult? How are you going with it? Hello to our tip in Canada as well. Anu and Ansi, welcome. Well, type in any thoughts you have. Do you find it easier than part C, perhaps harder than part A? Um, perhaps you have experience with workplace communication, so you find it quite manageable. Um, well, we'll sort of delve into these things in our session today, and we'll also do some work building vocabulary as well. Jamal says, bit easier than part C. That's a positive. Excellent. That's what we want to hear. I'm still looking for my YouTube channel, but I don't seem to be able to find it. Uh, Safi says, easier than part C. Good. Um, Marita, not difficult. And you got eight in IELTS. Well, that should translate well to uh, that should translate well to OET. All right. Well, good to get a few comments there. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, Massium says it's easy in part C, and Kans is a bit confusing. So hopefully we can fix that for you today. Khan, help you in that regard. And Yoji says it. It's challenging, yes, getting used to the accent. Um, some people find it the hardest part. Mm. 
Harvin says the grammar is most important for OED. Yes, look, it's a language test, everyone. So grammar is one of those foundation things that will help you in all areas, um, all parts of the exam. So a good comment there, Parveen. Mohammed says requires a bit more attention. Well, that's why we're here today. All right, and today we're gonna do the part B's from the OET Center website. It's their new set three that they put up on the OET Center website. So after today's class, if you want to review again, that's where you'll be able to do it. All right. Okay, all right. All right, let's get started everyone. So I'm gonna to begin today. Um, we're gonna to begin with a few idioms, everyone. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is because in the speaking, we do get lots of um, idioms. So I've got three idioms to begin with and you can see it on this screen, everyone. So uh, because in spoken English, we use a lot of idioms. And even though this is formal, uh, there's still a lot of colloquial expression that you can find in all listening parts, part A, part B, and part C. And quite often, it's that little bit of colloquial expression, that little bit of slang or idiom, um, where it is one of the clues for the answer. So um, it's very worthwhile building your vocabulary in that area. Okay, so the first one we've got today, to eat out of one's hand. And I'll read the sentence. Can you believe that? Jane has Scott eating out of her hand. Female two says, I know. It looks like he's head over heels in love with her. We've got two idioms there. So first question to everyone, what is the meaning of that expression, to eat out of one's hand? Type in what you think, everyone. Type in what you think. I'll just wait for your answers to come on through. To have someone eat out of your hands. Can you believe it? Can you believe that Jane has got eating out of her hand? Manipulated by others? Well, I wouldn't say quite manipulated. I suppose it, I get where you're coming from though, Marita. That's kind of the negative connotation there. To control someone, yes, you're gonna have control or to be under control. Yes, we're getting close to that meaning now. So, yes. And to, but to do whatever someone wishes. So yes, under control, to do whatever one wishes. All right, that's a good expression. What about head over heels? Can anyone give me a synonym for that? Head over heels in love. What does head over heels mean? Have a think about that. And while we're thinking about that one, um, let's move on to the next one to have the upper hand because we're doing idioms of the hand everyone in case you hadn't noticed the hand to have the upper hand what does that mean if you have the upper hand <laughs> so we just said spending money no not about spending money to be more in an advantage for upper hand, yes, AMS. Yes, to be in the to be to have the advantage over someone. Let's look at our sentence. Who do you think has the upper hand? Spectator two says Roger Federer. He always seems to come out on top. Spectator one says, I'm not sure this time. I'm going for the underdog. It's another one, everyone. An underdog. So to have the upper hand means to dominate, to have an advantage. Yes, Amber got it to be dominant. Hello, Amber. 
um, to be stronger than your opponent. Exactly, OG. Okay, to dominate. And then we've got another expression there, everyone. The underdog. What does the underdog mean? The underdog. You can have a top dog and you can have an underdog. If you are the underdog, what does that mean? Have a think and we'll go to the next one. Now we've got an interesting one. Hands down. Hands down. Vaccination is hands down the superior method in preventing common illnesses such as measles, mumps, and rubella, and it lasts a lifetime. Vaccination is hands down. What does that one mean? Uh, while we're waiting for that one, in the meantime, yes, AMS got it underestimated. The underdog is the one that you think won't win. Yes, Yoji got that as well. Well done. Now, hands down. Animal says plays a major role. A little bit different to that for hands down. Yeah, getting close, Marita, with important. Vaccination is hands down the superior method. Yes, no doubt or without doubt, the most important. Yes, a lot of good. Yes, that's right. Without doubt, with 100% certainty. Indisputable, says Nevji. Well done. Yes. Okay. All right, excellent. Okay. Um, some of us do we teach grammar as well. Absolutely, we teach grammar. We'll have a little look at that at the end of our class. Um, but let's move on, everyone. We've got a bit to do now. We've got some listening to do. That's why you're here. So let's go with our listening. So listening part B, everyone. Uh, it's workplace communication. You're going to be listening to team briefings so these are the options team briefings with one speaker one speaker giving a briefing to the team which team the health professional team the team of nurses the team of doctors the team of allied health professionals who's ever in that team a team briefing it could be a handover between two health professionals so it could be a doctor to a nurse, a nurse to a doctor, to physios or, or allied professions, whoever um, they deemed to um, or created that conversation around. Um, so that's the handover between two health professionals. And finally, it could be a health professional and a patient dialogue, which is a bit similar to listening part A, um, but there is one difference. Probably in listening part A, you're really going to focus on the patient. Whereas listening part B, if you have a health professional and a patient dialogue, probably most of the time, though not always, you want to focus on what the health professional says. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, the skills that you need. Well, you've got to understand the main idea of that communication, the essence or the gist. Um, you've got to understand the purpose, which might be the reason why that communication was made or held. Um, and you've also got to identify less important detail, um, because quite often we can get the answer just from one or two phrases. Now, remember when you listen a little bit like uh, when we did reading part B um, last week, if you remember, uh, with multiple choices, you've always, you've sort of got two strategies. You've got to rule in and rule out. And you won't really know until you listen which one you're going to be using or whether you're going to be using both. If answers are false, quite possibly you can rule them out. 
if they're not given, then you don't know. You just have to wait and then you're going to rule in the correct answer. So you'll see today when we do some of these tasks, uh, some of them it's more about listing and ruling in, but some of them you can actually rule out incorrect answers as you listen. All right. So we're going to do the first one and let's look at our vocabulary here and then I'm going to press play. I hope you've got a pen in your hand and you're going to try to identify the answer. So the first one, we read our question here and I'll just annotate this a little bit. You hear a patient talking to a dental receptionist. So we're in a dental situation. Do we have any dentists out here, out there? Shout out to um, any dentists. This should be a good one for you. Uh, okay, talking to a, a patient, talking to a dental receptionist. How does he feel? Oh, he, what does he? He means the patient, doesn't it? So we, we, we have to think about how the patient feels. Now, I always look at these adjectives. Is the patient worried? is about that he may have a damaged filling? Is he disappointed that he can't be seen immediately? Is he nervous about being treated by a different dentist? Now you've only got 15 seconds to read those answer choices before you hear. So my suggestion is you just underline keywords like I've shown you there, especially if they're in line like ABC, worried, disappointed, nervous. And then the remainder, keep your eyes on the text and listen as you go and then make your choice. All right, I'm going to play it, everyone. It'll only go for about 45 seconds. So you've got that bit of time to get your answer. All right, here we go, everyone. Hi, I'd like an urgent appointment, please. Let's see, who's your usual dentist? Mr Garcia. You say it's urgent. Are you in pain? Yeah, it's the tooth Mr Garcia filled last week. Well, he's away today, I'm afraid, but there's a free slot this afternoon with his colleague Mrs Brown. Uh, well, that'd be OK, but are you saying Mr Garcia could fit me in tomorrow? That's right, we'd get you in first thing. Can you wait? Well, I'm not chewing on that side and I'm taking paracetamol, which is helping. Mm -hmm. The pain started when I was eating a steak, so I'm frightened I might have upset Mr Garcia's work. It makes sense for him to check it out. OK, we'll book you in for tomorrow morning at 10. All right, that was pretty fast, everyone. Pretty fast. Some answers coming in. We're getting some Bs, getting some A's, some C's. So everything's coming through. Have a think. Yeah, a real mix. So, wow, that was pretty fast. Lots of different answers there. A, a pretty much an even spread. Well, let's have a look at the text, everyone. Here's the text. I'd like an urgent appointment, please. Female says, let's see who's your usual dentist, Mr. Garcia. You say it's urgent, are you in pain? The patient says, yeah. Uh, female says, the receptionist says, well, he's away today, I'm afraid, but there's a free slot this afternoon with his colleague, Mr. Brown. He says, that would be okay, but are you saying Mr. Garcia could fit me in tomorrow? That's right. So that rules out B, everyone. He's not disappointed that he can be seen immediately because he can. He would just have to see a different dentist. It also doesn't say he's nervous about seeing the different dentist. So let's have a look. Answer is A. Well done if you got A, everyone. And look what he said. He said, the pain started when I was eating a steak. So I'm frightened I might have upset 
Mr. Garcia's work. Now that's an interesting use of the word upset there, everyone. Well done if you got this one. I might have upset. He's wrote he may have damaged a filling. So the word work, Mr. Garcia's work is a synonym for the tooth that was filled last week. So we had to focus on the synonyms there, but we could rule out B because he wasn't disappointed. He could have been seen um, immediately and C was not given. I hope that's clear, everyone. It was quite fast, wasn't it? Quite a challenging one. He was worried that he may have damaged a filling. A little hint, everyone. Um, little exam strategy. When you see words like may, modal verbs that indicate possibility, always give them careful thought. Modal verbs um, are quite often um, have a reasonable chance of being the answer. So look out for modal verbs. Okay, all good, crystal clear. Let's do the next one. That was our warm up, everyone, just to tune our ears. Okay, let's do this one. You hear part of a presentation to nursing staff about an extension of visiting hours. So this will be, this will be one speaker. It's a briefing um, or a team meeting to nursing staff. So let's have a look, everyone. What is the speaker doing? Detailing some benefits. So think about that word detailing. If you see the word detailing, that means they're going to give a lot of information about something. Reassuring them that their workload won't increase. So is it some sort of reassurance? It'll be OK. Or is it explaining steps they should take to avoid problems? Now, remember, um, make sure you know they means nursing staff and their workload means the workload of the nursing staff. That's what they're talking about. All right, let's try it, everyone. Are you ready? Let's do this one. Now, you'll have received the survey asking your opinion about extending visiting hours and doubtless you've got your own ideas about the possible impact on your work. You're probably aware of the evidence pointing to the positive effects on patient recovery rates of increased contact with loved ones. This isn't in question, but of course things must be managed properly. I've heard concerns about how busy everyone is, that you've got enough on your plates without having to worry about extra demands from visitors. Well... We've carefully planned things to prevent you being overrun with queries, interruptions and so on. Visitors will be given a list of do's and don'ts outlining what's expected of them. And meanwhile, managers will be monitoring things carefully to make sure routines aren't disrupted at all. OK, everyone. Could you pick it up? A, B or C? Was the speaker detailing the benefits of the change? Were they reassuring them that their workload won't increase? Or was she explaining the steps they should take to avoid the problems? Okay, getting a few Bs, Cs, different answers coming through. Cs and Bs. Not many As, nearly all Bs and Cs. The odd A though. Lots and lots of answers coming through. All right, let's have a look. So here's our text, everyone. What are people going for B? So it's either B or C. Okay, it's not A and hardly anyone went for A. So well done. So B or C and I say they're 50 50 between B or C. Is she explaining steps? They, they should take, that nurses should take, or is she reassuring them? 
that the workload won't increase. It's B, everyone. How did you go? That caused a few problems. So what can we do to help you with that one? Well, let's have a look. I'll just read it again. I've heard concerns about how busy everyone is. That means nursing staff, that you've got enough on your plates without having to worry about extra demands from visitor. And then it goes on to say, well, we've, that's the um, managers, not the nursing staff. We've carefully planned things to prevent you from being overrun. So it's the managers that are doing the steps to avoid problems, not the nurses. So it's a presentation to nursing staff. Is that clear, everyone? Visitors will be given a list of do's and don'ts outlining what's expected of them. Meanwhile, managers will be monitoring things carefully to make sure routines aren't disrupted. Hard one, but that's what it reassuring there. It's, it's reassuring. And that's, you've got those words worry. I've heard concerns, people are concerned and people are worrying about extra demands. Well, they're gonna stop those things from happening. Therefore, they're reassuring them that their workload won't increase. A lot of synonyms there. Is that clear, everyone? I'll help you out a little bit with your vocabulary. Let's have a look at vocabulary, everyone. Um, I'm going to ask you some questions. So we had that expression. I hope you can see this picture. It's a bit small, but they said in the text, you've got enough on your plates. And look at this very busy nurse with multiple patients. What does that mean to you? If someone says, I can see you've got enough on your plates. What does that mean? You've got enough on your plates. Type in what you think it means. While you're thinking about that one, um, we've got another one. Prevent you from being overrun. What does overrun mean? Overrun with queries. I think, Zachary, that overload is the second one, being overrun. AMS puts in too much to do. That's right. A lot of work, overload. Yeah, lots of good. You're getting it. You can see by the image. So to have a lot of work to do to have a lot of things to deal with. Um, yeah, a bit tricky. That's why you've got to build your vocabulary. That's why you need to, that's why learning idioms like this is very important for your listening exam, everyone. Make that part of your strategy. Remember, we do idiom of the week every week on our website, on our Facebook page. So make sure you're checking that out. Um, so overrun with queries to get more queries than expected. More queries than expected. Okay. Let me ask a question for the nurses out there. Do you find this is true for your job? Do you have enough on your plates in your daily work? That's a question for nurses. Des has already answered it. Nurses have already a lot of work to do. I sympathize with you nurses. You are gems. Okay. And the last one here, do's and don'ts, everyone. The patients have been given a list of do's and don'ts of what's expected of them. What does that mean? Do's and don'ts. Do's and don'ts. You can see a lot of nurses saying definitely too much. <laughs> All you hardworking nurses, says Tomoko as well. I'm getting a lot of agreements with that. I think I've hit, I've hit a nerve there. Come on, you doctors, you help out those nurses. <laughs> Was Nurse International Day just recently, so congrats to you nurses. I hope you got looked after on that day. Doa says, and doctors also. <laughs> this is at the moment. Not only plates, says Yoji. 
Okay. Do's and don'ts, everyone. Rules to obey. Rules and regulations. Yes, it's like that. But in this sense, yeah, um, the patient's been given a list of do's and don'ts. Yes, rules about people, sh about how people should and should not behave the way you do things. Yeah, what you can and can't do. So in this case, the patients have been given a list of do's and don'ts, what they can and cannot do. What are patients like at following the rules, everyone? Are patients good at following the rules? What do you think? Yeah, it's like instructions, Kim, exactly. All right, so lots of idioms coming up, everyone. Okay, let's move on. Good explanation, Numan. Dina says, yes, they're good at following the rules. That's good. All right, let's look at this one, everyone, as the answers come in. Doa says they're demanding. All right, um, this one. You hear a surgeon discussing a patient with a nurse. So this is two health professionals, um, like a handover, everyone. You hear a surgeon discussing a patient with a nurse. What is the surgeon concerned about? So the surgeon, so that concern for me is a key word. What are they concerned about? Are they concerned about incomplete results? Are they concerned about possible side effects? Or are they concerned about the patient's level of consciousness? One of those, everyone. Have a listen. Let's see how we go. Um, handy hint, keep your eyes on the screen. If you, have a, if you are having trouble concentrating, consider jotting down a few notes. That works for me. It works for some people. Jotting down notes as you go, just to keep that focus, that engagement, everyone. Another strategy is just close your eyes. Well, I don't know about close your eyes, but just concentrate. You could close your eyes, but you do need to keep your eyes on the answer choices. But listen carefully. Remember, we're, sometimes we're looking for the deeper meaning, for the synonyms. So here we go. It looks like Mrs. Jones is still a bit groggy after her thyroidectomy. Uh, will she be going up to the ward soon? Yes, I'm going to call a porter. She should be going up in 15 minutes. OK. Uh, I've added some extra post-op pathology orders. Uh, she may have problems with the drop in her calcium. Her thyroid was just huge. Uh, we didn't see all four parathyroid glands, and we need to check that they haven't been affected by the procedure. She seems OK, but I want her calcium level checked twice a day. Uh, she needs to be monitored for any breathing problems, mm. muscle cramping and numbness, and for tingling in her fingers. OK, I'll make sure a report to watch out for hypercalcemia is passed on. All right, everyone. A couple of people came in early with their answers, trying their predictive skills. Did you predict right? A lot of people going for B, the odd C. B seems to be the flavor though. Got an A in there as well. All right, and the answer is, well, A wasn't given. They weren't talking about the lab results being incomplete. And it's not about the patient's level of consciousness. Didn't really talk about that. I'd say that wasn't listed as a concern. Um, answer was B, everyone. A lot of people got it well done. High success rate on that one. 
And, and I think what are the clues, everyone, those people who got it right, what clues, what helped you get choose this one? What helped you choose it? There's a few things here we can look at. I was taking notes. I noted the word problems and the word monitoring. And we've got the word procedure. Procedure being a synonym for post-operative. Type in what clue. A lot of people did really well. And then we had, then we listed them. Maybe you got the answer from breathing problems, muscle cramping, numbness, and tingling. Maybe these symptoms. We need to check. Yes. Ah, that's good. Um, we need to check that. So check. And then we got the word affected. So there's a lot of clues in that language. A lot of clues there. Even Ta, because she had thyroid surgery. So medically, you were able to. That was your clue. Well done, Ta, if you could pick up on that. Monitoring worked. Yep. Affected. Yep. The word affected, extra post op. The procedure got me while listening. Good. So all those little clues, quite often it's just one or two words that can really help you with that. All right. Let's um, now someone mentioned the word groggy. I'm going to look at that word now, everyone. The word groggy is an interesting word. Now look at that image, everyone. Well done, Maimon. You picked it. Um, look at this image. It says, and the, and the text said, it looks like Mrs. Jones is still a bit groggy after her thyroidectomy. That's also a bit of a clue. What does groggy mean? Groggy, everyone. Give me a synonym for groggy. Yo, you got it with the hypocalcemia. Excellent. Yep. Chiamaki is asking that question. Drowsy. Ruby, yes, you're on track. A bit sedated, says Kim. Yep. Sleepy. Yep. All of those are right. It's an interesting word, groggy. So I've got a definition for you. So to be groggy, it's unable to think clearly, usually following a procedure or medication. So you'll see this word used a lot in, the, in your workplace. Bit different to tired anilamol and not really lethargic, no. Different to those. If you're groggy, like lethargic or tired is more a physical thing. A bit different to sleepy as well, Taha. You may not be sleepy. Um, your thoughts are muddled. You're not thinking clearly and often because of a procedure or medication. Mm. Affecting consciousness. A bit confused, says Hengame. Yep. Patient's a bit confused. Um, well done if you got it. Intoxicated, yes, says Divya. That's the other meaning. Where does this word come from? Well, look, the adjective groggy comes from the noun grog. And this is what the sailors used to drink 300 years ago. And it was rum with water and they called it grog. Um, and obviously after drinking grog, they became groggy. Their head became unclear. So... Grog is also a synonym or slang for liquor, beer, um, wine. We have an expression, um, he was on the grog last night. On the grog means drinking a lot. Mm. Groggy itself doesn't mean intoxicated, though. Um, 
the it just means not able to think clearly. So the the words changed. Groggy actually means is not really used for a hangover so much. And Taz says drunk. No, if you're groggy, it doesn't mean you're drunk either. It doesn't mean that. Grog is the alcohol, but it's the effect of the alcohol on the mind that groggy refers to. Okay, getting a, a side question, someone saying here, will the exam be held on June 13? Depends where you're located. Check the OET Center website for that one. Okay, now keep lightheaded. That's good, Kim. All right, let's keep going, everyone. This is now I'm going to give you a little um, tip here, everyone. This question's a bit tricky, a bit tricky. So take special care with this one. You're going to need your full concentration. You hear a chiropractor briefing a colleague about a patient called Ryan. What's the overall aim of the treatment plan is the question. So now the key word I'm going to give everyone here, the key word is overall aim. So you're, that's the big picture question, not the small picture, the big picture, right? So think about that. It's not a detail. It's a big picture, the overall, the purpose of the treatment plan. Chiropractor talking to a colleague. So it's two health professionals talking to each other about a patient. Good luck, everyone. Remember, overall aim. Is it improving pain relief? Is it restoring feeling? Or is it treating the side effects of an operation? Let's listen. Today, we're going to start with Ryan. He's two weeks post-surgery for a torn rotator cuff. He also had a spur on his acromion process removed. Uh, this is his first time in rehab post-surgery, I believe. That's correct. Okay, so today we're going to begin utilizing high-frequency vibration to break up the scar tissue forming in his left shoulder joint following the surgery. We're going to do each of his treatments that way, so you'll see a progression over time, how we get him back to a point where he's able to live his normal life. Movement's the key to rehabilitation, and this treatment resonates with the nerves too, so it should eventually help them heal quicker and reduce his discomfort. Okay, tricky one. You've got a C coming in, B and A. Sam's taking notes, talking about the side effects, that's right. Rehab, that's a clue. Yeah, type in your clues, everyone. Getting some A's and B's as well. Okay, here we go. A, it's not A, not improving pain relief. That's not the overall aim. And restoring feeling in the arm, again, it's part of the aim, not the overall aim. So C, treating the side effects of an operation. Well done if you've got it. Well done if you got it. Yes, improving. <laughs> Hafsa says that was groggy. <laughs> yes, that was a bit groggy. That was a bit unclear. Yeah, I can tell you, I'll tell you the truth, everyone. I did this and I got trapped in practice because I'm not a health professional and I didn't really read overall aim when I did this. I, I thought it might have been A, improving pain relief. And I got the word pain relief from reducing his discomfort, right? Reducing discomfort, but that wasn't correct because 
that was just part of it, but it wasn't the overall. So that's, you really got to read that question carefully. Um, it's one of the traps of this exam. All right, the overall picture, the side effects of an operation. What are the side effects? Well, break up the scar tissue, um, get him back to a point where he can live his normal life, rehabilitation. Um, nerves, for me, nerves related to feelings. Um, Hmm. Ty says, difficult question, but not if you're a specialist. Oh, yes, excellent if you can use your medical knowledge. It's why you're doing OET, everyone, and not another exam, isn't it? You're bringing knowledge to the table. Um, someone says, confusing. Yes, was a, a tough one. Was a tough one. Hengame says, if you didn't mention overall aim, I think I went for A as well. Yes, it's the overall aim. So it says, we understand the treatment of side effect is part of the overall management plan. Excellent, Safi. Glad you can use that knowledge. So yes, in this exam, be very careful with the language. Naveen says, feeling wasn't mentioned, so eliminated B. Good. Excellent. Maria, it's the first wrong one. Well, let's hope you get some more right ones. Um, we've already got a few. Let's keep going, everyone. One more. I think we've got one more. Okay, let's have a look at this one, everyone. I think we've got two more. You hear a surgeon talking to a group of medical students about patient risk. So that's our topic, everyone. We're talking about patient risk. A surgeon talking to a group of medical students about patient risk in emergency surgery. The surgeon is emphasizing, okay, look at this word, everyone, emphasizing something. So again, it's a surgeon talking to students, and it's all about emergency surgery. Are they talking about prompt preparation? Are they talking that certain types of surgery carry more risk than others? That's a comparative. Are they comparing things? Patients at high risk require extra recovery time after surgery. So high risk patients. Okay, or prompt preparation, most effective to minimize patient risk. We're gonna read, okay, let's do it everyone. I won't give you any more. Let's go. If you look at the risks of elective surgery, they're really very low compared to emergencies. Clearly then we can make the biggest difference in reducing risk and improving outcomes in emergency surgery. Our mortality outcomes here are actually below average. We are at 8% compared to around 13% nationally. The emergency patients I handle tend to be older, so they're at higher risk. And when they come in, we haven't got long to prepare them in order to reduce any risks, maybe an hour or two. In terms of patient safety, every minute, every half hour we can use to get them ready counts. That's because the patients we're thinking about are prone to developing post-operative complications given that they have a range of associated heart, kidney, and lung problems. Here it is, everyone. Getting some A's. C as well. A lot of A's coming through. I think you've nailed it, everyone. I think you've nailed it. The odd C, but it's not B or C, everyone. It's A. 
Well done if you got this one. Excellent work. Not too bad, was it? Little, it tricked a few people. Patients at high risk require extra recovery time. But it wasn't really taught. If you went for C, tell me why. Those who went for A, what was the clue, everyone? Is it similar to what I highlighted? We haven't got a lot of time to prepare them in order to reduce the risk. Prompt preparation is the most effective way. Well, that's why they, it does what it says here. When they come in, we haven't got a lot of time to prepare them in order to reduce any risks. Maybe an hour or two in terms of patient safety. Every minute, every half hour we can use really counts. So every minute counts. That's the meaning of prompt, isn't it? Every minute. Preet got it. Every half hour. Well done. Uh, quite, oh, excellent work, Hengame. Look what Hengame noticed. Well done, Hengame. We got the word prepare. We haven't got a lot of time to prepare them. So if you hear a word that gets repeated, um, that's also a clue, isn't it? That word prepare, we haven't got a lot of time to prepare them. Prompt preparation. And then get them ready. That means prepare. Same thing. So that was a clue. Well done if you spotted that. Every minute counts exactly, Miriam. All right. Excellent if you got that. Well done, everyone. Um, and no one went for B, which was really good. Because B is a comparative. Watch out, carry more risk than others. As I've said before, um, try to, we, nothing's 100%, but I tend, I'm, I'm always skeptical of answers which compare. Um, generally, not always, but those sorts of answers are, there's often a trap there. So be wary of that. Um, Hearing the same word a couple of times, like prepare, get them ready. That's a good clue, everyone. Okay, well done. Okay, we've got one more, everyone. One more, let's keep going. Last one, lucky last. Fingers crossed for this one. You hear a surgeon talking to a patient who's just had a knee operation. So surgeon to patient, focus on what the surgeon says. Ah, maybe not, maybe focus on what the patient says. The man's comments, oh, we do need to focus on what the patient says because it says the man's comments reveal, show, demonstrate, indicate. What, what do the man's common comments tell us? Do they tell us he's determined to do sports as quickly as possible? B, are they, is he impressed by how little time he spent in hospital? He's impressed. Is he surprised that he'll be relatively pain-free so soon, so quickly? So is he determined? Is he impressed? Is he surprised? A little tip, everyone. There's an idiom in here that's part of the clue. Good luck, everyone. You might find ruling out is the best strategy. So try it for this one. Try, see if you can rule out as you go. Try that, everyone. How are you feeling, Mr. Shaw? Oh, exhausted. But the painkillers must be working. Uh, I can't feel my knee as you predicted. You're bound to feel weary after an operation. It went well, though. 
We cleaned out loose cartilage from the joint. You can go home now. Oh, thanks. I had an arthroscopy on the other knee several years ago, so I know what it's like. The idea that it gets done in less than a day is still pretty mind-boggling, though. Mm. Uh, you'll need crutches for two weeks, mm -hmm. but you should be walking okay within a month. I'm good. Give it four months before you put any serious impact on it, though. Four months? Uh, after my last stop, I started running again within a month. Uh-uh. Thinking about it, though, <laughs> I guess I paid for it. That knee had a lot of niggles for months afterwards. Yeah, if your body's hurting, it's telling you something. Okay. Okay, answers coming through. A couple of Bs to start with. Lots of Bs, the odd A. B, B, B. BBB, BB, look, look, B is very popular. The odd A, but mainly B. Let's have a look. It's not A. He does want to do work, but he understands it takes time. He knows that. And he's not surprised that he'll be pain free. Nobody went for C, or almost no one. Um, he's not talking about that. He's talking about. He's impressed by how little time he spent in hospital. What was the clue for everyone? Now, for A, determined to start doing sport as quickly as possible. No. Um, he does say, um, after my last stop, I started running within a month. Thinking about it, though, you know, I guess I paid for it because he had a lot of niggles last time. So he's reflecting on that. Ah, uh, yeah, last time I went back too quick and I had pain or niggles after that. This time, I, he's not determined because determined means no matter what. But he remembers from his previous surgery what happens if he goes back too quickly. All right, well done. Pretty mind boggling. Noon Man wants to hear it again. If you want to hear it again, go to the OET Center website, everyone. This is go to their prepare page. This is set three. Um, you'll find this there. Uh, the clue from Rita was less than a day. Um, well done if you got that. Um, yes, that's that's a clue, isn't it, that one? Less than a day. And mind-boggling. Okay. You got this. I think you guys got it smashing it. How did you go today, everyone? How many did you get right? And um, what does that, I've just, last activity, everyone. What does mind boggling mean? The idea that it gets done in less than a day is pretty mind boggling. How do you boggle your mind? Fabian says, when will you go live next? So just keep your eye on Facebook. Pretty soon, Prissy. Five out of six for Yoji, well done. Nevji got it. Mind-boggling. Hard to believe, i.e. surprising. That's right. Six out of six for Angelo. Well done. Yeah, did, so mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. Something difficult to understand. Something extremely surprising. Something perhaps that overwhelms you. All meanings of this, of this word mind-boggling um, amazing also works um, disturbing I don't disturbing is a bit negative so not really disturbing no unexpected yes what about this one that knee had a lot of niggles 
What's a niggle? You can get a niggly pain, a niggly pain, or you can have a lot of niggles. That's a common descriptive word for pain. I wouldn't say mind boggling, confusing, probably an element of that. A few people wrote, um, but it's a bit more amazing, surprising. Yes, yeah, so I, I guess, but there's an element of that in it. Maria got five out of six. Well done. Niggly discomfort. Yes. Yes. Aching. Yep. Tingling, no, no, definitely not tingling. Throbbing could be, but a bit different to throbbing. I wouldn't say throbbing pain. Probably discomfort's the best one. Look, a slight, so niggle is not big. That's the key. That image makes it look worse. That image probably isn't the best image because that image makes you think it's very bad. But a niggle is just a slight but persistent annoyance. It's a niggle. Yeah, maybe a dull ache comes and goes. Might not be there all the time. So it's almost like a, a background pain. All right, well, I hope you found that helpful, everyone. Um, and as I said, if you want to do these again yourself, go to the OET Centre website. I'm going to bring up a few... Uh, sites as well in a moment just to share with you um, so I'll do that too so look just I uh, want, want to tell you a few people asking about courses everyone so look if listening is your weak area or just doing a bit of a course spotlight everyone um, we got a listening class tomorrow morning, bright and early Brisbane time. Um, I've just sent that link to our website, everyone. If you're looking to do a bit of study with us, uh, make sure you come along. Just putting a few links in there for you. Um, And in terms of courses, look, if listings you difficulty, we've got two great courses for listing. Let's have a quick look at them. Uh, you've got our virtual listening class plus teacher support. Now that's, look, if listening's really hard, if you're in the C range, if you're getting around 250 to 300, this is the one. You get unlimited live classes for six months every week on listening. It's a class every week you get, um, two private listing tutorials, one hour long. You can focus on your part A, part B, part C, whatever you wish with one of our expert tutors. Um, seven listing sets, full complete sets um, in that course plus extra practice material, skill building material. That's a great option to think about. Then you've also got virtual listening class. If you just want the lectures only plus five sets, that's four month access, only 125 Aussie. That is a bargain. It's probably about 75 US everyone. Floriella, thank you for your support. Studying with Steve is already the best. That's what we like to hear. Um, so check those out. That's our listening courses, everyone. And I'll give you the links to that page. I'm gonna tell you about a little bit more. A few more things to do. If you're studying with us already and you want to encourage anyone else, just type in any comments. That's a listing page. Really, really great practice there, everyone. I'll be teaching listening tomorrow live online. Uh, now, one more. Um, if you want to do an all skills course, I thought I'd highlight that. The exam's starting to open up a bit. I know there are exams scheduled in June, June 13, June 27. There's OET at home starting off as well. A lot of big changes coming. I know in some regions, it's still a bit difficult. Um, so hopefully it's not too bad for you. 
But look at these courses. Um, Turbo, you get unlimited live classes covering everything, but this one has that writing focus. If you want a tutor, an expert tutor to point out any errors that you might be making, well, go for Turbo. If great for a short time period, um, you still get all your um, reading, speaking, listening material. You get the three writing corrections, reading, listening sets, and those lectures. Now, it has two month access, but you could finish this course in two weeks. Any course you enroll in, we already have a month of videos sitting there waiting from the last month's classes, and then you get what's happening in the next month. So a lot of material. And then it comes to economy. If you just want to go it alone, everyone, economy is great value. Just a Australian dollars 99. That's about 60 bucks, everyone. 65 bucks US. Uh, unlimited live classes for two months. You can't get better than that. And you get your speed, you don't get writing correction, but you get all your writing material, samples, model letters, all analyzed, case notes, strategies, everything plus reading, listening, speaking. So again, excellent options, everyone. So for the all skills courses, everyone, I'll just give you the link so you know. There's, that's the link to the all skills courses. And, um, I'll put that in. And one more slide, everyone. Um, pathway to exam success. How do you get your B? Well, obviously, you guys are all working hard, but it might be really useful to um, jump in and do a course as well. Um, and this is the pathway. This is what we're all about. We want to give you a pathway to exam success. So let's follow that pathway. Excellence in e-learning, that's online language education. We've got dedicated and passionate teachers who love nothing better than helping health professionals. Highest quality material, big effort into our um, course content and we're always working on that. Um, outstanding student support. You can contact us, you can call, you can email, you can message, doesn't matter. We will give you that support you need on, on your journey. And then this is where you come in. Highly motivated students. That's what you need, that motivation level. But we'll encourage you. Follow that all the way around. Exam success. So join us, everyone, on the journey. Um, we'll be happy to help you. And don't forget, we've got a free trial course. So if you want to just join our free trial course. I'll give you that link as well. I'm giving you lots of links, but you can find out which ones work for you. Um, and that's it from me, everyone. Uh, any final questions to wrap this up? Thank you very much for coming. I will be back soon. Keep your eye on the various media channels um, to find out exact. But we will be doing reading part A next. I can tell you that. Um, keep your eye out on the various channels for the exact date once that is confirmed. Um, Nea says, you learned a lot from this class. Excellent. That's what it's all about. Sarah Jenny's already enrolled. It's the best thing to do. Follow Sarah Jenny's advice. Okay. And good luck, everyone. Stay healthy. Stay well. Um, keep helping all those patients that I know you are. And we'll see you in the next class. Bye for now.